Thanks for watching our program tonight. Uh, it is the All Day Live show. I'm Wolpe Wilson, and uh, we've been doing this as a community for our community, and it is a community, very strong cannabis-related issues that are involved with what we're doing as a people, as a community, to legalize it, to take it away from prohibition. There's a lot involved. Again, thank you for watching All Day Live. I hope you've enjoyed this program. I hope you enjoy more of them. Thank you. Free Drum Circle, August 28, 2014, over here at Gasworks Park. Whatever. Is this somebody's wedding? Is this somebody's wedding? Yeah. What is it? What's the get together? It's an orientation for our class. For uh, college? For our medical school. Medical school, right here. So these yeah. are all, you guys are going to be really powerful. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can yeah. I be on the patient list when you... I'll be patient. <laughs> How about cannabis doctors? <laughs> cannabis medicine? Possibly. Do you think it's possible? It's happening here? Cannabis medical? Are you filming? Well, I don't have to. You want me not to? Talk to a couple of people over there. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I do the all day live TV show. Okay. You want to be interviewed real quick for the sure. show? Um, now, this is the med school. You're just getting started? Um, this is my second year. I'm starting my second year. Oh. What's your thoughts on medical cannabis? Oh, what was that? Medical cannabis. Medical campus? Cannabis. Medical cannabis. cannabis. Um, I think for. For some patients, it's it's important. It's it's a different way, it's an alternative way for them to control their pain. Right. Um, so I think I think it's important, um, and I think all physicians should be aware of it and consider it for certain patients, and they shouldn't be judgmental if their patients do 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 decide to go that route. Right. Right. Now, there's different types of cannabis, non-THC, which is CBD and CBG, right? And those are anti-inflammatory and non-psychoactive, and there's new strains that are coming about, right? 
like the Gelstack company that's going to have 600 pharmaceutical products now authorized by the Senate. Are you familiar with the Gelstack company? I am not. Well, now you are, and it's kind of interesting because it means, like the VA, is not. it doesn't want to issue the so-called neuroleptic drugs or whatever, like the, the, uh, the codeines, the cottons of different types of drugs because it's killing, it's killing people. And so what are we going to replace it with? Have you thought about that? I have not. Honestly, I have not given that much As time. you're going into med school, would you be interested to want to know more about that industry? Is this now happening? I think so. Would I, you be I interested? Think, I think it's important to be aware of all that's yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, you kind of become like one of the people that not only says, gee, this is happening, but you kind of help also make it happen kind of thing possible. Cannabis is found, removes nuclear contamination from the human body, from the soil, from water. Did, you didn't know that problem. You didn't know that. With Fukushima, we're in an extinction event, and so we have to do things to be able to prepare ourselves to, to survive, and cannabis can do that, I think. Am I wrong? I mean, I don't know. I mean, can we look into that? Yeah, I, th I think there's would, definitely value in looking into it. Would, would you help me do future broadcasts for All Day Live? We can look into that and help me do that sometime? Um, it might be an interesting project, fun, and, and people will learn all over the world what we find out. Um, possibly. Okay. Yeah, second year is pretty uh, sure. intense. I'm sure. So. I didn't know what you're saying. But remember, at least TV shows are archived. They become federal trademark documents. Okay. It's a lot of power in what can we do with public access. Hi, hey, how are you? For medical camps. Anyways, my name's Wilpie Wilson. That's Wilpie Wilson at Gmail. Okay, my phone number is 206 337 And I'm going to get a hold of you. How would you want that to happen? So, like, we can get back and forth. Like, maybe have you help me do more broadcasts to find out more on this. I think the email would be the best way to Okay. Okay. That would be great. I'll write it down for you. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Thank you very much. That's incredible insight. There's a lot more to, that we're doing. I've got 120 hours of documentaries on medical cannabis. And I wanted to get people from the medical community to be seen and heard, because it's all of us. And that's also, it's a new thing. It's a new industry. It's a whole serious thing people don't even realize. I really appreciate it. I'm greatly honored. Really am. So let's, let's talk later in future. Hey, it's All Day Live. From Seattle Northwest here, cable TV. So it's the Miracle Memory Restorative Anti Anxiety High Ten years. Ten years. How do you, what do you think of the, the strikes on there? It's pretty nice. There's some double, there's a little double stacking on the ground. Kind of pushes up because you get barely right on the thickest part. You get away. Yeah. Oh, well, you should get some seats from me. So, uh, 80 bucks a 10 pack. Hey, thank you. So, how, do you, how, do you how do you feel? I feel good. Your vision or in an hour and a half ago, you know, I haven't fucking eaten anything, eaten anything yet, and I've been hungry or uh, on your feet, or you know, I noticed like that didn't do shit to me. Like, I had these so many people that didn't do shit. I go, Have you ate today? And like, when they ate the cookies, no. Did you do any weed today? Yeah, I did dabs with them, with them, with them, with them, and they're all passed out, passed out, passed out. And I go, Oh, really? How's your mission right now? Oh my god, I can read on that boat. And they're like, I can't just consider it too much. I almost said, but tomorrow, after I talk, I'm putting it throw me away. Okay, I'm going to get fucked up. I'm not going to remember the right thing. While I was at Hempfest, someone passed me a bowl. That's the last fucking thing I remember. And a brownie and another bowl of a joint. There you go. Wow. Okay, thank you. Nice meeting you. Yes. Okay, you're good. Yeah, you must have seen the
On my Jack Hare pipe. Yeah. Yeah. That Tommy Chong signed. Yeah. It's the trend now. Is that him over there? Yes. Yes. Who is he? Oh, he's the cannabis guru himself. From he took over for Ed Rosenthal. Should we go uh, interview? Yes. He, uh, yeah, I would if I were you. I'm going to Mr. Nice Seeds. I gotta tell you. Let's go there and get a video of it. This is with old Toby. Yeah. Will you sign my plant? <laughs> right there on that leaf. No, I gotta go over to Mr. Nice. Just, just come on over there real quick. Come on over there. We shouldn't be worrying about water so much because if there's more water out there. I'm gonna show Kyle how to spend my plane. That's like from an eight-year-old seed or something. This is a that's a ten-year-old cut. Yeah. Ten-year, yeah. Ten this is the one everybody wishes they had. That's the one I got. The one I won't get rid of. <laughs> you know how that nice. goes. Come on over. Yeah. Let's be. No, that is the one everyone wishes they had. I'm Will Wilson, by the way. How are you? It's me. You've had a movie. Yeah, I have. I've been doing about 200 documentaries already. Oh my God. On all the live. It is. I've done a lot. Pardon me. You're good. Matt, come on over. What do you guys think of the conference? Pretty good? Is it, is it yeah, accomplishing a lot? Actually, it's, I just got here and I've got this and yeah. I wish I would have heard Dan and the other guys talk earlier. Right. Oh, that was quite a good thing. Oh, I 
I I never have trouble talking, so I'll go right ahead. Uh, uh, the rights of patients. Uh, I've seen a lot of patients uh, since uh, the inception of Northwest Cannabis Market in 2011. Uh, they talk to me on a personal basis. They tell me about their stories. Their T.J. Patterns. Stone, one of the greatest uh, growers in the world. I watch them struggle. Aren't the greatest, in and out greatest of growers cars. in the world, strain creators. I uh, watch them uh, struggle around the market to the point where they How you been? Hey! Good to see you. This to the booth. Okay, it needs to go on. Uh, I'll be right there. All right. That's old Toby. Old Toby. How the fuck? How the fuck? So people know what they're saying. 
In fact, my memory is so bad. We've done shows. I've only seen three shows, by the way. There's, I'm serious. I've never. I've only ever, and I want to see them all because I. I love. They're, they're interesting. But of the three, a couple of them I was not medicated, and I watched it, and I'm like, I'm watching the show, like, why the hell did that guy say that? Well, that's not true. Well, that fucker just contradicted himself now, and it's me. <laughs> Lying, contradicting, but then just, I don't know why I get like nervous or whatever, or sometimes I just think that's human error or whatever. I don't yeah. fucking know. So, sometimes I go, wow, that's really cool. Oh my God, I can't believe I, I just heard somebody actually say that. And so I don't mean to like, I'm so great. I don't think I'm great at all. Uh, yeah, um, today was a good day. Yeah. I got a lot of uh, recognition from people I really deserve their, I mean, I really respect their opinion. Jorge Cervantes asked me for his phone number, for my phone number. That was good. Uh, Kyle Cushman, we got filmed trading expert, you know, cannabis genetics and growing advice. Uh, DJ Short is archiving old Toby into a seed vault. So that's good. Yeah. Because he refuses to grow other people's strains no matter what. I'm like, I worked on this for 10 years. Let's work on something together. Give you a boost with your seed company or whatever, try to get something good. And he's like, he doesn't want nothing to do with it. He's really busy doing his own research and he's engineering the process so that he can have a consistent from point A to point B genetic mutation on record for a patent. We're trying to save, if someone works 10 years and less than a million dollars and 500,000 lab testing at least, and a million dollars in wages if you could add it up. And then everyone just grabs their Girl Scout cookies and crosses it with Durban poison as Durban cookies or whatever. Yeah. You never make any money off of working for 10 years to get the genetic to that point. That's the big problem. That's where people get pissed off. Yeah. Cannabis for stealing each other's strains or whatever. But there's, it's hard to protect that legally. You gotta, it, it's so expensive. Yeah. Um, and the, the processes just haven't been engineered <laughs> that the, the quality control criteria needs to be like Coca-Cola and Budweiser, where you can tell if it's a little bit chemically different, it's not Budweiser. If it's yeah. too much sugar or not, it's not Coca-Cola. It has to be that. As soon as you can get it engineered to that point, yeah. now we're talking about a patentable process with the resulting invention. Yeah. So we can take these um, simple medicines or simple chemical compositions like THC and CBD and CBN and all the familiar cannabinoids and we can balance them into a complex a form of complex medicine that um, is hundreds of percent more effective than any individual compound. And so that's the future of medicine right there. Period. Like the future of limb replacement is growing ears and noses and appendages on the back of a rat not mixing them in a test tube in a machine. It's not going to be a 3D printer, an organic 3D printer. Yeah. It's going to be grown on another or complex organism because yeah. it's com complex chemical compositions. Are you ready to hit over at Mr. Nice? Yeah. Pretty quick. Mr. Nice Seeds will be there in yeah, just a minute. We should split up. I'm California, thank you. Just like just some free t shirts. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Outstanding.
even though I saw a TV, maximum medical benefit, it's outside the maximum, the cannabinoid gold block zone. So Correct. For G. So all you gotta do is about five days or whatever, about 20% or seven days or 20% or so of the glands, turn it more milk, milky, a little bit more CTHC will develop and your G will drop within that. And I've got the lab test, it's about 23 to 1. With a light, with a point four, point four zero differential, high or low, that takes it outside of that super anti-inflammatory realm. Now, it, it, old Toby is medicine though because it is consistent in that it's like always within like with everyone, anti-anxiety, non-drowsy, appetite suppressing, psychoactive. You know what I mean? There, it's, it's a it's a a clear-headed, energetic sativa that wakes you up. It doesn't fuck up people's memories. I think it's a great straight. So it's, it's yeah, for medical, it's great. I think it's great for over 80 and under 8 or whatever. People that need THC for different ailments but don't want to be all debilitated. You know, and, but that's the that's the entire strain consistently it has those effects. But it, it, certain planes, certain plants, individual plants, like I had 5 out of 12 that were harvested just fucking right that are super anti-inflammatory, and even it restores my memory. People with edema, they're like, they're they're like shrink. there's miraculous shit. Now, before I've been going around promoting old toy as miraculous, not every single plant, if you harvest it wrong or grow it, environment's huge for the chemicals. They're so sensitive, you know, complicated. It's a chemical factory, and it's 200 different chemicals exactly balanced. You chop wow, that at 43 days or 90 on. days, yeah, there's, that's a lot going on. Yes. He's got, Matthew's got a lot going on. Yes. <laughs> Matthew, you have a great weekend, brother. Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. I'm nervous as hell. I gotta get up on the stage. Yep, I know I'm you do. But I, like what you're doing. I like what you're doing. Uh, you gotta pull that old Toby. I, I do. I, I do. do. Yeah. I, it's good. It's, 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 it's actually it's pretty good. Come on, check it out. Yeah. Turn the speed. Just smoke it. Are you going to rock? Go over there! All right. Go over there. Go over there. Yeah, Matthew. Matthew Gold coming up here. He's only been getting new presents this morning, so I'd like to take a warm welcome for Matthew. Come on over here. All right, Matthew Gold. Come on, go over All right, thanks very much. Uh, so what I wanted to have five minutes today to talk about anything I wanted, and I kind of walked around and got a feel for everyone's attitude. And um, it seems like we kind of won a big, a big hurdle. A big jumped a big hurdle and won with recreational legalization in Washington. And um, now we need to convince the rest of the country that cannabis is going to boost our economy. Like, if anybody's been to Colorado lately, people out of work there because they want to be out of work. It's just, the, it's great. Um, the economy has been just saved. And we can save the economy for our nation and our global economy and our ecology with cannabis. And um, it wouldn't be the first time. It would be history simply repeating itself with him saving our country's uh, financial crisis again and and again and again throughout global history and um, I believe that um, the reason why cannabis is illegal not why it was made illegal because of the petroleum companies the pharmaceutical companies DuPont having nylon and oil companies and the tree the lumber industry not only, you know, we know why, the prejudice, we know why that it was made illegal, but it's remained illegal. It's remained illegal. Thank you. Um, because a very small, small majority of us enjoy the intoxicating effects of cannabis. Um, 5% globally. Most people can't tolerate the confusing, paranoid, or the random side effects. So that everybody tries it, and they go, oh my God, thank God this is illegal. I was so messed up. If everybody smoked this every day, our whole economy would be destroyed. And um, so they vote for it to be illegal. But now we're in the middle of a global renaissance where science and education are dispelling the prejudice and 
the um, taking away the superstition from cannabis and hemp. And it's really the last, this um, ignorance, prejudice, and superstition are three of the last chains shackling us to the dark ages. And we can throw those off. And ed education through science is the best form of activism. It's like the theory of gravity. They used to burn you at the stake if you thought the earth revolved around the sun. But through science and education, we now know that to be so. And so if we can have that same, um, that same education and our global community, which is coming out of the dark ages, finally in 2014, there's a huge renaissance happening. I mean, you can't lie to people anymore. They're too smart. They realize the benefits of the plant for our ecology, for biofuel, food, um, and you know, all of the wonderful things, both things that we all know that cannabis can do. So. Anyway, we, I just wanted to say congratulations to Washington and Colorado and all the other states that are going to follow. And, you know, I really appreciate all of you coming to Hemp Fest and standing up for you know, all of those that, the, you know, the prisoners and all of those that, that came before us that have fought as activists and that are POWs in this war. And um, it's one more step to freedom. So, all right, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew Gordon. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I tell you, you know, this is what it's about, folks. Yeah, this is where this is where the pot meets the bowl. Right? This is when we find out with. Everybody's locked and bring it back. Keep coming the box. It's a three quarter of a million dollar event. Magazine, popular, and you, you really, that ain't normal. Well, Chief Buck will help you out with Rick Cusack coming up here. He's going to tell you. And lay it on the line exactly how it is, because nobody can do it better. I'm telling you. Come on, give it up. It's Rick Cusack with High Times. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. I am Rick Cusack. High Times Magazine. Number one marijuana magazine in the whole damn world. Let me get the commercials going around first. This is our 40th year, and next month is the 40th anniversary edition of High Times Magazine. Big double magazine, you're gonna love it. And on top of that, in three weeks, we are coming here to Seattle with the United States Cannabis Cup. <laughs> the Cannabis Cup is in the United States because you guys legalize weed. <laughs> we were able to do medical cannabis cups in San Francisco, we did them in Los Angeles, we did them in Denver, and then Colorado and Washington legalized weed. And the United States Cannabis Cup came to the United States. I don't know what legalization in the United States looks like, but I guarantee you there will be a Cannabis Cup there. So here, that's proof right now. I thank you. We wouldn't be here unless you guys did what you did. It's a miracle. What has happened in Washington, what has happened in Colorado, is nothing short of a fucking miracle. It is my job to keep up on this shit, to know what's going on, to understand what's going to fall when it falls. And I didn't see this coming at all. If you asked me 40 years ago, we'd have two legalized states, I'd say you're out of your mind. But here we have them, we've had them for a couple of years, and it's working great. I live in New Jersey. I am, in addition to being the associate publisher of High Times, I'm a board member of Normal, and I'm the chairman of the board of New Jersey Normal. And in New Jersey Normal, it's still illegal. In New Jersey, they put you, I'm not in New Jersey Normal, New Jersey, it's still illegal. They still put you in jail. Out. No, I'm back, right? 
They still put your kid, they still take your kids away. I'm a single dad of a 17-year-old daughter, so that really is very important to me. Um, in New Jersey, we have a medical law. And in the new Northeast, we have a number of medical laws, but we're about to crack our first legalization law. And the reason why we're about to crack our first legalization, we don't know which state's going to go first. It's going to be Vermont, might be New Hampshire, might be Massachusetts, but it's going to go. Because the numbers are there. And the reason the numbers are there is because what you did in Washington State. Understand, this resonates throughout the country. And it has real, real effect. I don't know whether or not you got a perfect law in Washington. I don't know whether you think it's a great law or a bad law. I'll tell you this, it's a fucking great law to me because it makes me go back to New Jersey and point and say, do you see what can be done? Do you see what's possible? Right. And suddenly, we went from 50% in New York to 54%, to 56%, to 58% of the American public are for legalization. This is the end of the American war on marijuana. We're here, right now. There will be books written about this moment in time. Right here. It happened in Washington. It happened because the Seattle Arm Fest for 23 years. Just kept bearing at it, man. Bam, bam, bam. Until you legalized weed. And then I was able to go back home and say, they legalized weed out there. What the fuck? I just got back from Jamaica. And in Jamaica, they're decriminalizing marijuana in September. In Jamaica, they are getting rid of all the low-level prosecutions that they've had already. And they're going to legitimize religious use and legitimize medical use. That's a done deal. It's happening in September. But I went and I talked to a lot of the players that are doing that. I did interviews with them. None of them are talking about decriminalization. All of them are talking about legalization. They're talking about legalization in Jamaica within the next year. And it's going to happen. And everybody I talk to, without exception, on the highest levels of government, Rastafari, everybody, said the same thing. This is happening because of what happened in Washington State. This is not just resonating throughout the United States, this is resonating throughout the world. And speaking for everybody that doesn't live here, I'm the associate publisher of High Times Magazine, and we all thank you very, very much. My name's Rick Cusick, thank you for your kind attention. This guy has been working longer, I think, than anyone I know in this industry. And another guy that's been working in this industry for a long time. Special friend of mine, John Davis, I knew this guy before Hempfest even was. Even before, there was a glimmer in my mind, I met this guy. And then I saw him one day and I was just going, oh, okay, great. We need more guys like this. We, know, we need more people like you. John, he does a lot of things here. He's the uh, VP and chairman of Seattle Headfest. This guy has been able to take over and, and just diligently make these people bend like a hip stock. I tell you, they won't break, but they bend because of John, okay? We have this park up here because of John. We're able to do things here that we weren't able to do before because of John. So please give it up to John Davis. Come on. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Seattle. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Um, marijuana is legal here in Washington State. Thank you. But has anyone tried to buy it? <laughs> yeah, there's not much out there. Right? Uh, the uh, one and only uh, cannabis store that's in Seattle and even in King County has been open with uh, product for a total of six days. <laughs> we have, uh, we have, we have no home grow, and we have uh, a DUI that's unscientific, and we have uh, medical cannabis 
that is been in a legislative limbo. Um, so we have come a long way. Really, we have come a long way. Um, I got involved uh, over 20 years ago. I, uh, I got involved at Hempfest. Uh, this is my 20th year. Um, and we, in that time, we have come so far to the place we are today. Hempfest, I am very involved in the permitting of Hempfest, and this year we went through negotiations and came out with two legal areas where nothing can happen to you. Uh, it is completely legal within those areas if you're 21, although there's no enforcement anywhere else, right? Uh, but it's an important advancement because the city is using Hempfest here as a beta test so that you can have a smoking area at the Puyallup Fair, right? So that you can have a smoking area at Bumper Shoot, right? But there's still so much more that we have to do. Two states have legalized, yes. 48 more states have got to go. We still have the highest incarceration rate of any other civilization in the history of civilization. The Nazis couldn't do it, Stalin couldn't do it. We have more people in prison now than any other uh, nation in any other time in history. For uh, African Americans, African Americans are 8% of the population, 9% of the drug using population, and 56% of the drug war prisoners. It's outrageous. So we have so much more that we need to do. And, but we've been handed this great time in history. Look, like uh, Rick was saying, you are living history. History books will be written about this time here. And now it's left up to you what we're going to do with it. Um, I was a kid when I got engaged. I was a kid when I became an activist. I, when I first became an activist, um, I thought that meant I talked about marijuana a lot. Right? And then I found out how to get engaged. And then I found out how to be effective. And then I found out what a legislator, a legislature was and what a legislative process was. And this is what I encourage us all to do. Go and don't, don't just let this, this time in history wash over you. Be engaged. Be part of it. This is, the history books will be written about all of us. Get engaged in this time. Let's put together something that absolutely works. Because what we have now is important. It's an important step forward, but it still doesn't work. And, and we are still not there. And we still have people in prison. And as long as we have that, we're going to have to keep working on this. And as we are working on this, I encourage us all to work together. Have difference of opinion. Differences of opinion matter, right? But have those dialogues with your fellow activists and don't think that they're horrible because they have a different opinion. Find out why they have that opinion. Think about if, if that has any merit, right? And have a reasonable discussion with your contemporary and find We'll find the best argument by having those conversations, but, but too long we've been divided, and too long people have said to me that they were afraid to have an opinion because they were afraid that someone was going to trash them for their opinion. Well, no longer. We're, 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 we have to work together. We have no one else. No one else is going to help us, and we've come so far. So let's get together. Let's get engaged, and let's end this thing once and for all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John. I really, really, I can't say enough. I mean, from, from the bottom of my heart, brother, I'm telling you, I don't know where half this would be without people like that. You know, I don't know where our lives would be either, or where our laws would be. You know, without people like Bill Geringer coming up here, he's the director of California Normal. I'm sure you guys have heard of that too. This guy has been here every year. I'm not sure how long, but I know he comes every year to tell us exactly how they do it and what they're doing in California. And to, just like John was saying, 
We're going to inspire you to inspire others. Please give it up for Dale. <laughs> well, thank you. And, you know, we are here on a very historic day. I kid you not, this is the 50th anniversary of the very first marijuana freedom protest on August 16th, 1964. A freedom fighter named Romeo Eggermeyer walked into the San Francisco Hall of Justice, pulled out a joint, fired it up, puffed it in the face of the desk sergeant, said, I'm starting a campaign to legalize marijuana. Arrest me. And they did. And let me tell you, that was a serious offense in those days. It was a felony. All right. And let me, not everybody in this crowd here may remember 1964 like I, I do. It's very vivid for me. That was my uh, uh, high school uh, graduation year. And I can tell you, nobody knew anything about marijuana then. I didn't know of anybody who smoked marijuana at my high school. Um, marijuana, well, you don't know, of uh, habeas corpus to the California Supreme Court. Uh, arguing that Mr. Eggemeyer should be released from jail because the laws were unconstitutional, a violation of the Eighth Amendment, they are cruel and unusual punishment, and it's out teaching you the truth so you can go on to teach it to others. That's right, okay. Dale Rogers has been here in Seattle, been helping our community, many communities here in Seattle, with Green Cross. He found the compassion in action, and now he's a, he's a cannabis research collective. So please, come on, give it up for Dale Rogers. Yeah! Yay! Hello! Are we having fun today? Yes, sir, Bob. This is one of my favorite stages here. Ralph Seeley was an attorney that had a rare form of brain cancer. He went to go sue the state for the right to do it. He, he lost. And as he gave, went up to the um, governor's steps, he it gave a nice, beautiful speech, but he said he did not want to clog the court system over and over again. He was a very good man and a pioneer in this, and I'm very proud to be standing on this stage. Now, um, I like to talk about medical. Medical has been my heart and soul. And what we need right now is research. We need clinical research. We have doctors and naturopaths and a bunch of healthcare professionals actually that live here in the Northwest and call home. We have the most cannabis researchers here in the Northwest. But yet, we're not allowed to do clinical research and we need to start pushing for that. There are patients who are, be, would be proud to be part of something and something positive. We need to understand how these strains work for specific diseases and also um, um, like spastic, spasticity and other ailments. <clears throat> so we need to still continue to push for patients' rights. Now, the recreational one, I'm glad I passed. I've never asked my grandmother her political views. I asked her, did you vote for 502? And she said, yes. And I said, why? And she goes, marijuana is already out there everywhere. And you know what? For me, that summed it up very well. So when you do a new program, you're going to have bugs. You're going to have a lot of issues to work out. But you know, last week, I had Joanna McKee, uh, co-founder for Green Cross Patient Co-op, who started uh, medical cannabis in state. And she asked me. She goes, what is going on with this recreational? Are they trying to overthrow this, make sure the program doesn't work out right? Because our retailers and our producers have had their spaces for almost two years up to code, which they had to spend thousands of dollars on, and they've been sitting there paying rent without any not being approved. Well, this is a financial heartache on them. Maybe they borrow the money from their uh, family members. Maybe they have investors. And so they're being stalled. This is not fair in any way, shape, or form. And we need to speak up for that. I want to thank you very, very much. That was a quick sum up. And hey, enjoy this next band. Thank you, Bill, so much.
But you're tired of this work. I'm sorry. It's all the way down to the humidity sweat rolling off of all of us.
a TV fan of this actress. Yes. Yep. That's right. We're working on a major, a major business deal. Yes. Outstanding. Facilitate the maximum medical benefits outside the maximum, the cannabinoid Goldilocks zone for, for G. So all you got to do about five days or whatever, about 20% or seven days or 20% or so of the glands turn more milk, milky. A little bit more CTHC will develop and your G will drop within that. And I've got the lab test, it's about 23 to 1. With a point, with a point, four, point, point four zero differential, high or low, that takes it outside of that super anti-inflammatory realm. Now, it, it, old Toby is medicine though, because it is consistent in that it's like always within like with everyone anti-anxiety non-drowsy appetite suppressing you know what i mean the, it's it's a it's a, a clear-headed energetic sativa it wakes you up it doesn't fuck up people's memories i think it's a great straight so it's, it's yeah for medical it's great i think it's great for over 80 and under eight or whatever people that need thc for different ailments but don't want to be all debilitated you know and but that's the that's the entire strain consistently it has those effects. And we're so happy to be playing music here, be a part of this revolution, be a part of this evolution, be a part of this beauty. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching All Day Live this week, and uh, I am Will P. Wilson, and uh, we're going to have an interview with Matthew Gordon, the strain creator of Old